Welcome back to India, Mr. Cameron. Um, back. You know, if you look at the headlines in some of the newspapers, in, especially in Europe, you know, uh, one of the words that keeps coming up is Europe on the brink. Is that an accurate description? I mean, as somebody who's watched this process very closely? Well, Europe has got some big challenges. We've got to address those people left behind by globalization. We've got to understand that people are concerned about the movement of people across our planet and high levels of migration. But if we address those causes of concern, Britain's obviously made its choice to leave the European Union, and I'm sure we can find a strong future that way. As for the rest of Europe, they need to address those two challenges. They also need to address problems inside the euro, inside those countries sharing that currency, uh, where they need higher rates of growth to demonstrate to people the benefits of, uh, of membership. Where do you think the process should start and could Britain possibly show the way with its multicultural, uh, multicultural multilingual society? Well, I think we need to start uh, with those who've been economically left behind and recognize that the rising tide doesn't lift all boats. And so it is necessary to increase levels of skills and training. Also, I think the minimum wage we've introduced will help. Let's take the lowest paid people out of tax. All those things can help to make people feel they are benefiting from growth in the economy. But I think your point is well made that on the more cultural issues, I think Britain can provide something of a lead. I'm not saying we're perfect, but actually people can see uh, that whether you're uh, African or Caribbean or uh, from India or Pakistan, you've made your home in Britain, you can get to the top. Uh, whether it is in the military or whether it's in politics or in business or the arts or in sport. Uh, so let's demonstrate that and show that, you know, a multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic uh, democracy can work and work well. As far as immigration goes, uh, do you think the answer is possibly in greater controls or, you know, a, a better system of control? Let's yes, we do. We need better control and more control. Uh, Britain is a country with large movements of people from the United Kingdom going to live and work in other countries and large numbers of people coming from other countries to come and live in Britain. People know that and understand that, but we need to make sure that people can see the system is under control, that we deal with illegal migration, that people who don't have a right to be in Britain are returned. And we do need a control over the overall number. I think it'll still be quite a high number of people coming every year. But I think the fact that there wasn't sufficient control of uh, people coming from within Europe was one of the very big causes of Brexit. Uh, your ally, uh, Sir Oliver Letwin, in fact, has just said that possibly both the Tories and Labour didn't do enough to take on people like UKIP on immigration. I think we have to both take on two arguments. One is to say it's good that Britain is a multi-ethnic, multi-racial success story. Let's celebrate that. Let's show how good we are. But at the same time, you need to take on a second argument, which is the system is well run and under control, and here's how we're going to improve it. And I think if you make both those arguments, then we'll win. If you only focus on one of the arguments, I think we'll lose. And the key thing here is every European country, and in the United States and elsewhere, faces these anti-system populist parties. They don't have the answers, but they do have the anger. And we need to take away from them the legitimate arguments so that they're left simply with protest, but without any purpose. There has been, you know, kind of a spike in attacks on people of, uh, you know, people of different color, different uh, religions, especially in the West. Yeah. And this is something that concerns Indians a lot. Uh, do you think enough is being done to tackle this problem? Well, I think we have to tackle the problem, but we also have to tackle the causes of the problem. And I think part of that is recognizing and being very clear when it comes to fighting, say, terrorism, that the problem we face is not uh, a great world religion in Islam. The problem is not Islam. The problem is those people who've perverted uh, Islam and turned, uh, for some people, uh, what should be a religion of peace into uh, 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 an organizing principle for violence. What we mustn't make the mistake of doing is painting everybody uh, the same for backing what should be and is a large part of peaceful religion. So we need to get the understanding of what's gone wrong right. There is a war going on uh, inside this great religion, and we must be on the side of the moderate majority who want to uh, throw out those uh, who are perverting this great religion. Uh, just one final uh, question on another question on uh, immigration. You know, a lot of Indian students are concerned about the changes that have happened in Britain. You know, uh, especially the fact that they're no, long, no longer able to work over there. Well, let me correct yeah. you because that's not the case. What what is the case is there's no limit on the numbers that can come and study 
uh, as long as they have an English language qualification and a place at a British university. And also, people are able to stay if they find work in a graduate job. What they're not able to do anymore is to work in a non-graduate job, and I think that is right. Um, what, what we want is people to come and study and, by and large, go home again, but those who want to stay should be staying to do a well-qualified job, not to do a job that could be done by a British person who hasn't had the opportunity to go to university but would like to work in the economy. So I think it's a very sensible approach, and I think people here can be reassured that the UK education market is wide open to Indian students to come and to benefit. You also spoke about the need to work together for, uh, you know, to address global challenges like terrorism. Uh, especially you spoke about a common de definition for terrorism, which is something that India has been working on at the UN since 1996. Is that a, a greater need right now, to, especially to tackle groups like well, I think, I think, you know, look, obviously it'd be good to have the definition. It's very hard to get it because you need the agreement of every other country in the world. But I think what we can have is a general approach that says, look, we must no more say that you know, suicide bombing is all right if it takes place in Israel, or terrorism is acceptable if it has these terms and conditions behind it. We need to condemn terrorism outright, and every country needs to take whatever steps they can if terrorists in their country are threatening another country, uh, to take every step to bring those people to justice and to bring that to an end. And I've been very consistent in making this argument when I was fighting as Prime Minister to try and deliver a peaceful and stable Afghanistan and a good relationship with its neighbor Pakistan, I made this argument very clearly to both sides. You also spoke just now about the good and bad terrorists. Now when that comes up, there's only one country that India thinks about. Were you pointing a finger possibly at Pakistan? I was making a general point. I just raised actually the example of Afghanistan because there you've had a problem of terrorism uh, from Afghanistan affecting neighboring countries, terrorism uh, from Pakistan affecting Afghanistan. So I was thinking of that example as well as others, but there are many uh, the world over where we all have a duty uh, to condemn, uh, to campaign against, to bring to justice the terrorists that are wreaking such havoc in our countries. I think Britain and India have a particular link over this because we have both suffered. I was discussing this with Prime Minister Modi yesterday, uh, I think there's a lot we can do together, not just the sharing of intelligence and uh, the mechanical actions needed to defeat terrorism, but I think also the bigger argument about making sure we support moderate Islam. You know, India is the second most populous uh, I I Muslim state in the world. And so you, you perhaps have huge experience of this, as we have some experience, and on that we should work together. Uh, you referred to your meeting with Prime Minister Modi yesterday. Looking back, I mean, you had a very good relationship with him. Was there anything that you felt that was left unfinished that maybe, you know, you could have done with, uh, with re regard to the relationship with India? I think there are lots of things that are work in progress. I think actually the security and intelligence cooperation and the levels of trust we can build, I think that is one. I think military partnership, I think that, uh, you know, all countries have a right to defend themselves. India has great opportunities in um, modernizing uh, its, its defense system. So that's a relationship we should work on. I think perhaps the biggest one is just if this is going to be a real modern partnership, you don't just look for um, your mutual advantage in trade and investment and smart cities and digital and skills. All those are vitally important, but you also work together on the big global problems, whether it's climate change or fighting for uh, less protectionism or, or um, whether it is uh, discussing together how to handle the rise of great powers like China. So that partnership, I think, is still unfinished business, and I'm sure Prime Minister Theresa May will want to continue it. One final question. How's work going on the autobiography? Do we have a title as yet? We don't have a title. It's going slowly, but I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, I'm taking life a little bit more slowly than I was, and I'm also combining that with work on causes that I care about, whether it's um, trying to increase the research going into dementia, whether it's encouraging youth volunteering, or whether it's building the relationship between Britain and India. That is something I can go on doing as a former Prime Minister rather than uh, an acting one. Pleasure having you here. Great to Great be back. To you. Thank you.